as was mentioned before, this talk will be in English. I hope you uh, enjoy it as well. You know. My friends from, from other countries uh, just teased me for about two years to switch to English finally and, and do talks uh, in more generic language than Polish that m more people can uh, enjoy or not, uh, or tease me. <laughs> and I decided to switch that. And we today we'll be talking about clean architecture. Uh, first of all, I'm Michael. Uh, and I want to ask you, okay, not better. I want to ask you a question. Who's know that term, clean architecture? Who is familiar with that? Okay. <laughs> Um, at somebody maybe do something like implementing maybe some code with that architecture in mind. Okay, couple people, cool. Then on the basics, uh, first thing, I want to tell you a story because this will be uh, based on a real case. Uh, I am a photographer, not only PHP programmer, maybe not full time, uh, but I enjoy taking photos and. As any photographer, I need to put my photos online somewhere. But I'm lazy, like any developer. <laughs> and I don't like do the same stuff twice. And I, as again, as any photographer, I use Lightroom for my, um, uh, for uh, taking photos, for managing photos. And I do a lot of work in Lightroom, tagging, uh, taking some categories, grouping the photos, etc., etc., And when I want to upload these photos online, I don't want to do the same job again. And I look, of course, for some online services that can do the work, but none of them can do that good enough for me. There are good, some, some, some of them better than other, but in general, uh, I need some other solution. And again, I am a developer what developers can do if nothing else is okay. I want to write my own. And that's where this guy comes. Because at, at the time when I decided to, work, to write my own application, I was also very interested to, in clean architecture idea. And this guy, who knows that guy? Yeah, that's more like it, cool. This is Uncle Bob, Robert's, what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe because I like Uncle as well, the music, Uncle, yeah. Probably this is my mental image of the word Uncle. Uh, yeah, it is b by the sea, not by the key. Uh, Uncle Bob is, uh, uh, who for, that, for those who don't know, it's uh, I think quite known figure in uh, developer industry. He is very famous. Uh, um, because he invented, maybe not invented, but he coined the term solid. Now probably everybody knows solid, what it is. And of course, he was not the guy who invent any particular principle, but he was the guy who first uh, take them together and make it public and go with, uh, with the solid principle and try to evangelize why these principle uh, principles are good. And he also writes some books like Clean Code and Clean Coder, who are now, now uh, I think, uh, one of the basic books that any developer should read. Uh, and he created an architecture called Clean Architecture. And what this architecture is, is a set of principles on how you design your application to uh, get a certain advantage. And this is like the this is the slide from his blog post from 2012 I think when he first proposed that that idea. And on that slide you can see that the architecture is layered. You can you can have uh, you, you have four um, different layers on your application. And most internal one is called entities. And entities are your enterprise business rules or application agnostic business rules. Your basic, uh, the most generic business rules that 
govern your whole application, or maybe even many different applications if your system is big. On top of that, you have use cases. This is the old idea before uh, user stories came to be, where you have some specification how to achieve some, some feature, how to do some uh, action. And use cases are your application-specific business rules, where you, where the, you, can, you can implement there your uh, actual business rules, actual feature that can or should be on your uh, website or application, or whatever. And those two are your application. This is combined together, this is your application. All of the rest is not important. There is a layer of gateways, controllers, like uh, interfaces that connect your outside world with your internal application. And of course, the most external layer is a layer with framework, database implementation, uh, API calls, UI, whatever. This is the, the less important part. Your core is entities and use cases. And I will try to explain why this is important and why the other part is not so important. This is a slide from also a presentation of Uncle Bob on some convention, uh, where he described in more detail how this should work. And what is important here is these two, uh, sorry, <laughs> two black dot lines. There are your boundaries. What is here is your application. What is here outside, on this side and, and below, is uh, your uh, external connections, your delivery mechanism uh, here. If you have web-based application, then here it sits your Symfony or Laravel or whatever you want. Uh, here it sits some OEM maybe, maybe Doctrine, maybe something else, maybe some API calls, some Guzzle system somewhere, hey, somewhere here. Uh, but what is very important is that this, this arrows, because all of the arrows point inwards. Everything goes to the application, but nothing goes out. What this means is that those parts know about this internal part, but this internal part know nothing about what is your uh, web system, what is your framework, what is your database, or even what is your engine that translates your queries to the, to the MySQL or whatever. This knowledge is not important. Why? Because if, if this is not important, then, or this, you can switch this. You can exchange that part. You can switch MySQL to whatever you want, and you don't need to change anything here. And as I said before, this is your core business value uh, delivery application. This is your heart. This is why you make money. This is your payment system, your uh, entities, your, uh, your features, your use cases are implemented here. And ideally, this code here is plain PHP code without any uh, annotations, without any uh, YAML files or, or JSON or XML files for configuration, schema, or something like that, without any connection to Guzzle, to Mongo, to uh, PDO, without anything like that. What you have, you have a set of interfaces. They're called boundaries. Because, and I show you an example in a moment. If you have just abstract interfaces, your application still can understand how to handle external connection. Because there's some interface. I can do some uh, behavior on that. I can, I can call some method, I can call some getters, because they are defined in your interface. But I don't care about the implementation underneath. It can be maybe some Gazelle request going inward. But this is, ab this is abstracted as an interface, and I don't know that, that this is Gazelle, or I don't know that this Implementation here is a, a doctrine. I know that I have abstract interface here, which defines that this implementation can understand 
get by ID or store or something like that. But I, don't, I know only that there is some interface with those methods. I don't know how those methods are implemented. And if you do that right, then this part becomes your, your application and the outer parts become your plugins, basically. You can switch a plugin and your application don't need to be changed. And I, if you think about it, this is normal plugin system. If you, if you install plugin for any application you have on your computer, you don't need to change the code of that application. You can install plugin, uninstall it, switch different version of, the, of different plugins, and everything still works. And nobody requires that installing a plugin to your Adobe or, or your uh, even some game or something like that require that the game developer or software developer need to change that, in that internal structure of the application. And the same should be in our world, in, in our web-based world, when we can switch our plugin to different one and only connect the dots. If I uh, have application in Symfony, I have probably some thin controllers, probably some, some view system, some template system, etc. And I can switch to Zend. And the only thing I need to switch is to create new controllers in Zen style or Laravel style and call in those controllers those boundaries and, and connect the dots to call actually application. But I don't need to change anything here. Okay, but this is story and how to implement it. Okay, then back to my problem with uh, my online services. I created sort of gallery, online gallery. Uh, this gallery is very simple. I export uh, photos from my Lightroom. I upload the Lightroom photos to the cloud, Amazon. And then I call my API, my online gallery API, with information, what are the URLs of those import exported photos in the cloud and what are the tags that, uh, that I assign to these photos. And first thing, I, I use Symfony. That this example will be about Symfony 2. Uh, I use, of, of course, dependency uh, uh, injection container. And I defined here some repository for photos. And I, in this case, I use MongoDB uh, with Doctrine. Uh, I have a factory for DTO of photos. I will explain that later uh, in more detail. And I have two interactors. What are interactors? Interactors are your use cases. What Uncle Bob said is what was very important part of the whole clean architecture approach is that when you open your application, modern application based on some modern framework, you open the, the project in PHP Storm or whatever, uh, you look on the folder structure. What you can say about this folder structure? What information this, this view can give you? If, you, if I show you my project uh, now with the folder structure, you can guess a framework? Yeah, probably. But you can guess what my application will do what behavior it has? Probably no. Then my question is why our project show us the framework but don't show us the core feature of our application? Why we expose a tool that we use to create some software but we don't expose the feature that this software has implemented inside? And this is the, the core problem that uh, Uncle Bob uh, finds out. And the whole principle of that clean architecture is that you need to expose your feature and hide your framework, your tools. And interactors are the layer uh, uh, outside the entities. It, it was called use cases. And interactor is term coined by the Uncle Bob. I don't found any better name for now. I use it also. It is basically your use case. If you have feature like, in my case, adding new photo to my gallery, then I will have interactor called add photo. 
or a photo interactor. If I have feature like displaying one photo on the page, I will have interactor get photo by ID or get photo by name. I, if I have collection of photos based on tags, I will have interactor get photo collection by tag or tag name or whatever. You get, get the idea. You have one interactor can, well, that can do one specific thing. And this is, of course, very good uh, match with the single responsibility principle, because in, in those um, architecture, in this architecture, you, you are forced to be SRP compatible, because your interactor can do only one thing. Uh, and this is, of course, beneficial, because you don't need to think about it. You can, you can have it from out of the box. And I have two interactors, add photo and get photo by ID. Uh, and of course, they have um, in param in constru constructor, I inject the repository. And in the get by ID, I inject also the photo DTO uh, factory. OK, now the controller. We have controller with action create photo. It is uh, slash photo, uh, URL with post, with some JSON response. And this uh, controller will take a request and extract the content that should be JSON. And there should be some fields like URLs and tags inside. And I create a photo, add photo command. This is basically a wrapper that uh, gives me an interface between my controller and my internal application. This is basically this add photo command is something like like this, this request model. I have interface with request model. Now my internal application uh, can understand what the behavior of that add photo command are, what the method I can call on that model. I get the interactor from the, from the service container, and I execute it. Because this is only one thing that it, it can do, it is basically just constructor with some parameters to construct the object and then execute method because there is nothing else like I can do with that method, with that class. It's only executing its function. Then I execute it and I pass as a parameter the command that I created from the request. Then now interactor will have uh, the data from the request inside. Uh, and this is the uh, interactor. The execute method just take the data, create an entity. Uh, in, in this case, is a photo document. Extract the list of uh, of tags inside that that uh, add photo command. Create the tag entity for it and a collection. Insert that collection by setter. Then insert the thumbnails, which is just plain list of of uh, URLs and store the document in some repository. And as you see in the next example, this repository, I don't know which repository it is on that level. We now are in the, here, you can see on the namespaces, there is a class which have a namespace web bundle, and there are classes that have a namespace core. And web bundle is basically Symfony, the delivery mechanism. Everything on the left on the boundary. And core is everything inside. And my interface here, the, this repository store, this repository is, is an interface that is created on the core level. And this, this, this interface has only uh, get by ID and store two methods. And if I inject here MongoDB repository, which, have imp which implements that interface, then I'm done and my core application doesn't know that this is Mongo. Just like that. Uh, now we go, go, go back. We get from that ex execute method a photo ID, some identifier from the database. Now we need to ensure that we store properly and we need to uh, pass that response to the screen to the user, and we use another interactor call called uh, a get photo by ID, 
of course, I get the inter interactor from the service. I cr call the execute method. I pass the ID to the parameter. And this uh, construct, this is the interactor. And as you see, this is photo repository interface in the construct. And photo DTO factory to create the DTO from the, from the response from, from the OEM. And this photo repository is actually defined in the core, not in the web. And execute is very simple, get by ID from repository, get the entity, photo document, and now I create a fact I use a factory to, to wrap the, the object into the DTO to avoid passing the entity outside the, the core. Uh, and what we have now is a very simple, of course, this is a very basic model. There is no complex logic in those interactors. There's simple uh, extracting data, wrapping objects, storing documents, or fetching documents. In more complex example, your, your interactor can, can do some more logic inside. Maybe you can, in control, you need to call many different interactors to proceed the whole process of, I don't know, payment, checkout. You can have many different interactors for different things that are going on in your, in your checkout process. But basically then, if you have a folder structure, uh, you can uh, look on the, on the folder names and the file names, and you have file like add photo to the gallery, get by ID, I don't know, check out, uh, check out uh, uh, your basket, uh, add product to basket, remove product to basket, and from that name it only, you can uh, assume what your application will do. If you open your new, new application, you're a new guy in the company, you open the application, the project in, in your PHP Storm, and you exactly know what is going on. And probably if somebody will tell you, we need to modify add product to basket method or, or feature, you just go to interactors and you sh look for the name. And it should be almost intuitive to do that. Uh, and that's basically it. I can recommend go to that uh, YouTube URL. There is, I think, one of the best quality and the best, I think, content uh, lecture, uh, Uncle Bob, about clean architecture. And it's a blog post for the original clean architecture idea, posted by the Uncle Bob also. And that's it. Thank you very much.